So I'll be just talking about the Surrey Hotler's iconogra iconographic tradition uh, in just five minutes. So many times we think that you know, this is not part of the Surrey Orthodox tradition. So we have one of the finest and beautiful and earliest tradition, especially in regards with the visual gospel. So we call these icons as visual gospels because these icons are telling a biblical story, most likely a biblical story. Sometimes it talks about the tradition of the church as well. So I'm going to tell you a story about a king whose name was King Abgar. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so um, this is a historic book from the 5th or 6th century, a doctrine, Doctrina of uh, Adai, the apostle. So he's one among the 72 evangelists. Um, so Doctrina or teachings of uh, um, Bartimus or his another name was Bartimus. Uh, so teachings of Adai. Um, so this was a 5th century book and I'm going to tell you the story from this book. So there was a king who was contemporary to our Lord and his name was King Abgar. He was also called uh, Ukma, means black. He was, um, his nickname was black. I don't know whether he was black or um, his nickname. Uh, well, it was accepted in the history that his name was black. And he was, uh, his headquarters was in Edessa. Now the story goes like this. Can we go to the next slide? Many of you have seen some of these images somewhere when you look for the icons or the tradition of the church. So you can see that somebody, uh, it's not somebody, you can see there is a king holding a mandilo. Mandilo means a kerchief or a small veil or a piece of cloth and that king is holding a piece of cloth and you can see the image of Christ in that. Well, this is a reproduced version of uh, uh, the original icon, I believe. And the story goes like this. This king, what was his name? King Abgar the Black, or Abgar V um, in Edessa. So he had been afflicted by uh, leprosy. You know, leprosy was not a good disease. Uh, no disease is a good disease, but leprosy, once you have leprosy in the time of at the time of Jesus Christ, you need to get out from the mainstream. You're not supposed to live in the mainstream. Instead, you know, you go to the, you know, you can, you cannot live in your home. You need to go and, you know, live in caves and things like that. You're not accepted in the mainstream. You're not accepted in the public sphere. So the king was afflicted with leprosy. So then what will we do? What will, will the king do? But he heard of Jesus. Jesus in Palestine, you know, this Edessa in Mesopotamia, um, so not too far. So the king wanted to see the great physician, Jesus Christ. So he sent a letter to Jesus Christ, the great physician, addressing him as Jesus Christ, Jesus, um, the great, the good physician. I came to know that many people are being healed by you. Can you come to my kingdom? And I'm offering, I just want to see you. I'm offering half of my kingdom. So this was the offer and there was a messenger named Hanan. He went to Edessa, I mean he started his journey from Edessa heading to uh, Palestine, heading to the place where Jesus lived and he met Jesus, this messenger, he was an archivist and a painter. He met Jesus Christ and then he gave the letter and uh, he requested that the king wanted to see him uh, because the king is having leprosy, uh, an, an ailment which you know, nobody can cure. So can you come to uh, Edessa uh, so that you know, the king can be healed? So what would be the response of Jesus Christ? He said, no, but I will send someone else. I will, I will send a letter, I will send a disciple later. And that's how um, the evangelist Adai was there. And you know, many of uh, you are part of St. Adai's church in India. Um, so there were some stories that he was the twin brother of St. Thomas and things like that. 
But what I'm trying to say here is um, there was an instruction by the king Abgar to Hanan if Jesus is not going to come I just want to see him so tell me or draw so that I can know that how Jesus looks like and looking at him my illness will be cured so then Hanan he was a painter too you know he started painting um, the face of Jesus Christ and he met with little success he couldn't paint the image the face of Jesus Christ so he started feeling so sad because the king uh, offered half of his kingdom and the king also told that you know if this is not possible what you need to do is just get me a painting of Jesus Christ a portrait so that I can just see him so that I will be cured so what Jesus did was you know, he took his kerchief and you know this small piece of cloth and he um, you know put it in his faith uh, in his face and then the cloth had the imprint of Jesus face and that's what we are seeing in this image and what happened to this image was this was kept in the Syriac Orthodox Church in Edessa up until the early part of the 7th century so there was another king um, so that well, in 7th century there was a, a different king he was a Byzantine he was a more kind of a Chalcedonian king not in the faith of the Syriac Orthodox Church or the Oriental Orthodox Churches so he visited the church of Edessa the bishop at that time he refused to give communion to the king so the king got mad and he took the image from the church of Edessa and he gave the image to the Chalcedonians so later at the time of Crusaders what happens is like you know this image was taken from Edessa to Vatican Italy so the image is still there but scholars are skeptical about the originality of the image that is kept in Vatican so if you look at the Vatican Syriac so you will be able to see this image uh, which the scholars are skeptical because the original image may have lost uh, and what we have is a reproduced one or what what the Vatican is having or in the one that you see in Italy is a reproduced version so the point I'm trying to say is from fifth century onwards we have a tradition about the image of our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, some of you have and if you have attended the Midland service Midland service at the time which we place the cross on the center of uh, the church um, in, 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 in during that service we have a special song uh, that we usually sing and it in, in the sing was about can we go to the next slide we, we sing about um, King Abgar so I, I don't know whether you remember singing this song but you know this is the Malayalam we sing uh, during the Midland service this is a fraction the, the Catholic the fraction hymn for the middle end so let's sing this song and conclude this session so the only point that I'm trying to say is like you know how the Syriac Orthodox Church cherish the great legacy of this visual of this visual gospel this is a visual gospel that we see in the images and that is being cherished by our church so let's sing this song Sean you will be helping me right okay uh, and we all will be singing together okay so are you going to play piano okay yeah so this is a pretty popular tone uh, you know the uh, more Jacob Boso that will be sung during the resurrection feast oh of God when all had seen the wonders of Christ you believe without seeking blessed are you Stood first in the line of those who were Gentiles, and you became the first among them to believe. You were given the precious image of our.
can see the story in these few uh, you know, verses in this beautiful song. And thank you for singing that in such a beautiful fashion, well pleasing to our Lord. So we have our Suryak Icon exhibition coming up next, next Saturday. So what is your role? Are you going to be present? So we have uh, the Icon exhibition open uh, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. But just, you know, try to be a volunteer because, you know, there will be many folks from the community coming and participating in the exhibition. So at that time, we need to help them guide. Uh, we, need to, we need to help them navigate through the icons. So each classroom will have uh, a set of icons and that will be arranged in a liturgical cycle. So if you go to the first room, you will be able to see the first cycle, the nativity cycle. So there will be like nine icons. Go to the second one, the baptism uh, epiphany cycle. You will be able to see again another set of nine or eight icons. And then the third, the Great Lent time, you will have like, you know, 22 or 24 icons. So as you move on, you will be able to see a lot of icons and you will be having some facts and uh, fun facts as well about the icons. There will be some games as well uh, as far and will be, Sebi, you're promising some gift cards, right? Or some, some gifts will be there. So, you know, you can participate in the icon exhibition in a meaningful way. And we'll be blessing a new icon that is placed um, in our um, entrance. And that will be blessed. And, in, you know, the icon exhibition will be inaugurated by two bishops. So we have our Synod Secretary, Mor uh, Timotheus Thomas, uh, who will be also coming and joining us on Friday. And our uh, beloved Archbishop, Mor Titus Eldo, he will be taking the lead, blessing the icons and inaugurating the session. Uh, so on, on Saturday at 5 o'clock, please make sure that, you know, if you can come around 4 o'clock so that you can have a look at the icons. And then from 5 to 5.45, we have a session by Dr. Michael Wingert on uh, the Syriac iconography tradition. So how these images and what is the image and theology of Syriac icon. So that's going to be a wonderful session. Uh, so just make sure uh, as many people do come and attend the service on Saturday. Again on Friday, the evening prayer is going to be here in the chapel at 6.30 p.m. So make sure that the chapel attendees do come early and participate in the evening prayer as well, followed by the um, inauguration of our exhibition and blessing of the new icon. So God bless you all. If you have not yet been assigned with a role for the icon exhibition, your role is to please come and support the exhibition.